If there is one thing this channel has emphasized almost from its first video, it is the problem of assuming that everything will be just fine when we set out on foot on a long trail like the Appalachian Trail or in a wilderness area. It would be my first wish for all of us that everything will be just fine in the outdoors, but reality does not always cooperate. Even when things do go fine, by the way, a level of inconvenience is inevitable if we are on foot on a long trail or in a wilderness area. We have to accept the likelihood of getting rained on, getting muddy feet, and working hard to climb big and steep hills, none of which are exactly convenient. Confronted by such an inconvenience, some hikers will stop walking at least temporarily. For example, many hikers have told on social media how they spend an entire day inside their tent or in an AT shelter because of rain. Yet, if we have adequate clothing and equipment and know how to use it, plenty of people will keep walking through such inconvenience. If, on the other hand, our hiking progress is forced to come to a halt or forced into a delay, I would call that more than mere inconvenience. At best, this is an annoyance. If worse than that, it could be a real aggravation. And if worse than that, it could turn into a serious crisis. I am thinking in particular of what aggravation I have experienced multiple times. It centers around the question, am I going in the right direction? It used to be said with some frequency, and is still said sometimes occasionally, that the Appalachian Trail is so well marked and so easy to follow that getting lost or heading in the wrong direction simply cannot happen. Yet, multiple AT hikers, including me, have told on YouTube how they certainly indeed have done two things. One is walking the wrong direction on the AT by accident. The second is walking down a side trail by accident. If we are lucky, we might catch this kind of mistake after traveling only a few hundred yards. If we are unlucky, we might go several miles in the wrong direction. How could this possibly happen, one might ask. If we hike on the AT and keep going and going, we will stay at many shelters, a sizable percentage of which are on side trails, sometimes long side trails, that often go downhill. Maybe half the time we take a right turn onto such trails, and maybe half the time we take a left turn. So, for many mornings, we hike back to the AT, and sometimes the night before was a blur. Did we turn right or left onto that side trail? When the AT makes a turn, or intersects with the side trail, we're told such spots are double blazed, which means we see a set of two blazes like those shown here. But there is a glitch. Who knows how many thousands of such intersections are on the AT, and I have walked past many with no double blaze at all. We need to remember these blazes are painted by volunteers. Given enough time, many blazes will fade away, and touching up white blazes for a large number of miles is a very big job. Another glitch is that the AT side trails are marked with blue blazes, but I have seen many blazes that are such a pale blue that I I've had to examine them up close to decide if they are blue or white. The blaze shown here, for example, looks white at first glance, but it's blue and is on a side trail. Another routine job on the AT is to step off the trail for a bathroom break, digging a cat hole so we can bury our feces. The AT Conservancy says we should go 200 feet off the trail for such a job. The call of nature being such as it is, we might be on extremely hilly terrain when we gotta go. When that happens, it's probably a case of doing the best we can. But there are many completely flat spots along along the AT, completely flat and heavily wooded. 200 feet is 60 yards. I have seen spots in which, if we were 60 yards from the trail, there would be absolutely no visual clue where the trail is. If we find ourselves in such a spot, we might need help to get back on the trail, and if we do, we will need that help badly. I have, for years, received Google alerts on hikers who go missing. With almost unbelievable frequency, when missing hikers are found, if they are found, they are not on a designated hiking trail. 
the United States has 63 national parks and most have hiking trails. Yet, a number of people will not stay on those trails and some will get into trouble when they don't. In my experience, there is one answer that will mitigate or prevent these issues. It's an answer that doesn't have to cost more than $20 in 2024. It doesn't have to weigh more than two tenths of an ounce. And using it the way I do is so simple, it's stupid. It's a compass. But there are three details that must be discussed this very second. The best use of a compass is to keep us out of trouble and not to get us out of trouble. If we don't touch a compass until we are in deep trouble, it might be too late. The compass must be instantly accessible. We will be tempted not to look at our compass if it is buried deep in a pack. I vote to put the compass on a watch band or pin it to our clothing or clip it to a pack strap. Compasses that will do this are easy to find. If we can stay cool, calm, and collected, no matter what's happening, we can get by with one compass. But I always carry at least two of them. Why? This might be hard to believe, but it is easy to look at a compass, see where it points north, and say to ourselves, this cannot be right. This has happened to me more than once. If we have two compasses and they agree on where north is, we need to forget about what we think. When this happens, we are outvoted, and we should pay attention to the compasses. If we must step off a trail like the AT in flat, heavily wooded terrain, the time to look at the compass is before we step off the trail. If we head northwest into the woods, for example, we go southeast to return to the trail. If we go east into the woods, we go west to return to the trail. We will get an accurate reading if the compass is at least six inches from metal or a cell phone, which can throw off the compass. The watch shown here, by the way, is mostly plastic. If this compass, which can slide along the watch band, is right next to the watch, I still get an accurate reading. Such things can be tested at home. Even so, when I check the compass in the woods, I'll slide it an inch away from the watch. There has been a lot written about and talked about using the sun to find north. However, we cannot count on the sun being there when we need it when we have to find north. I have spent multiple days in the outdoors where it was cloudy day after day after day with no visible sun. A compass is so light and so inexpensive, there is no reason for not carrying two of them iPhones include a compass, which works if we calibrate it. Before I buy a compass, I compare its reading to the phones. If a manufacturer uses separate processes to magnetize the compass and print the dial, an error of several degrees can result. If we hold the compass right next to the phone, it will throw the compass off badly. My practice is to hold the compass six inches above the phone for this test. Many times I have checked the compass before heading down a side trail to spend the night in a shelter. I might dispense with this if there's a really obvious terrain feature. For example, if I was heading up a steep hill before turning onto the side trail. If it has to be mentioned, the AT is not a perfectly straight path along all or even most of its length. Instead, it twists and wanders from side to side all over the map. Because I wear a compass, I have repeatedly done sort of a survey during my AT hikes. I would stop for a second and check the compass. This was done to answer a question. If I'm hiking northbound, was I ever on a piece of trail that was heading south? For example, west by southwest, east by southwest, or just plain south? It has happened, but it has only happened to me rarely. When it did happen, I would check the compass in another mile or so, and the compass would be on the north side of east and west, somewhere in the area marked in this image. I started doing this after my first accidental long walk down a side trail. The question is, would a compass help me figure out if I was accidentally on a side trail? I decided that it likely would. Even so, I also decided that the most time efficient option would be to closely examine trailblazes for any trace of blue if I was in doubt. If we do enough reading online, we will read the claim that on average, six hikers a year go missing on the AT. 
Not that they disappear forever, but they, quote, go missing. There is, by the way, no single government or official agency that keeps track of everybody who goes missing along the AT. That would be up to a number of local agencies that investigate such cases. It might be that if somebody forgets to phone home, they could end up being reported as missing, maybe. But despite all this, there is no shortage of people getting into trouble in the outdoors. In 2022, the U.S. National Park Service conducted about 3,400 search and rescue operations nationwide. This costs the Park Service at least $6 million a year. The link is in the description. When it comes to always knowing where we are and where we are going, a national park or national forest is going to be more challenging than the AT. I did an earlier video about navigating with a map and compass, the links in the description. There are three main points to keep in mind in such an environment. We need to be aware of where the main roads are. Do they travel in basically straight lines for long distance? Do we know if we are north, south, east, or west of the nearest road? The same can be said about features like rivers and power lines. This could prove to be a very valuable piece of information. I told in another video how I used such a detail to save my neck when I got lost in a large flat forest in Ontario. The link's in the description. If we have to use a map and compass to navigate, there is great value in knowing where we are on the map basically every minute. This is a far better option than waiting until we're afraid that we're lost. And lastly, if we ever envision relying on a map and compass, I would urge that we take a map and compass course, which I once did. Such courses are offered by outdoor clubs and outdoor equipment stores in many areas. And now, we're once again done. I frequently post news stories online, on Facebook, and on Twitter, or whatever the heck they're calling Twitter these days, and the links are in the description. On my channel page, I have a number of playlists containing more than 80 videos describing a variety of topics on how to keep ourselves out of trouble and keep moving along trails like the AT. And as always, thanks a million for watching.